you to notice the difference. The hotel fire. Oh yeah. All right. Hotel fire. Water fire. Okay. Impatient at the moment. Oh. And there's baby.
Oh, that is awesome! Yes. 
I got the baby. I can see it. Panky yeah, up ahead.
kind of opened up and settled back. Hi there. Spreech. Spreech? Yeah, that's a spreech. Spy hop. <laughs> Marshall, spy hop, and spot partial breach. <laughs> Oh, I think if we uh, are patient, we'll see something up ahead here. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Oops! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Oh. Small whale. Oh. Oh, yeah. You wanted a bloop. Come on over here. That's come not a baby. Here, come on, come on. Right come on. Oh yeah, he's right. He's coming up. Bam. Right under the Bam, boat. Bam, right under the boat. Right underneath us. Right oh. underneath us. God, it's huge. It is. Look at the size of that thing. Here's your fluke. Mm. You could be curious there, big guy. I got Hi. Baby. How you doing, Herman? Okay. Oh, they're gonna get out of the middle of these babies. Yeah, you're doing fine. <laughs> I love it. Oh, oh yeah, you just keep right up with us, too. Coming up. Coming up. Coming up. Watch the bump. Watch 
little nudge. A little nudgy. Oh, get away, get away. Come here, buddy. Ooh, yeah, look at that half one. Go get it award. Oh, oh geez. That's a heart failure. You son of a gun. <laughs> Come on, get that eye up out of the water. Take a peek. He's trailing us now. He's right here. He's coming right up here. He's trailing us. There he is. Come on, come on over. Come on, you old whitehead. Come on over here, whitehead. Come on, be good. Come on, be good. Come on, be good. Come on, Mikula. Holy mackerel, Andy. Holy <laughs> lips. Yeah, Holy. kitty! He's <laughs> up on your side, Pops. Yeah. Wait for I'm ready for him. Coming around. Boom. I sincerely hope I can get this. <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> Come on, right Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. That's a long distance from the fin to the tail. Again. Get your tail over here. No. <laughs> no, no, don't play that. Get your mouth over here. Oh, yeah, you heard your daddy. It's a little turn there. You can do without the tail. Yeah. yeah. Come on, baby, turn. Come on over here, Bosco. Let me scrub that. Hey, Bosco. Hey, baby. Hey. Give that eyeball. Yeah. Blow it over for you. Are you coming back again? Come on, rub him. He'll stay. Hey, hey boss. Hey. <laughs> All right. He liked that. How about that? Is that a kick? I gave him a good word with you. Come on, right here. Come on, right here. Come on, right to me. Come on, right to me. Right here. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Here you are. Come on. Look at that eye. Look at that eye. Come on. Give you a little right there. All right. All right. All right, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, oh, yeah! Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Upside down, right side. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. We feel the same way about you. <laughs> yeah, and your mama, too. That was the head of the tail for that now. Speaking of tail, this is right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey. Yeah. Look at that fin. Gosh, look at that fin. It's so huge. Jesus. Okay, come on out of Come to Daddy. Right over here. Here, right here. Come on. There you go. Hey, Joe!
baby. Big bass in the world. Yeah, we had a, a film crew on the boat that I did whales on a couple of years ago, and they got they got in the water with. Uh, has recently gained new attention due to the friendly behavior they've shown towards people. This unique behavior occurs mainly in their winter breeding lagoons off the Pacific coast of Baja, California. Okay, 15 years ago, there was no such thing as a friendly whale. The skiffs would go, at that time, at Scammon's Lagoon to just observe whales. Several years went by and everybody got comfortable with each other and one day a skiff with passengers was approached by a whale. They had not, they hadn't seen anything like that before, and the skiff driver was frightened, and they took off and went back to the big boat. They talked about it and decided that, well, maybe they shouldn't have been scared, but they didn't really know. Uh, throughout that season, there were these type of encounters, and, and finally, just through trial and error, they realized that these whales weren't there to hurt them and weren't going to hurt them. They didn't know they were real friendly yet. It took time. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Yeah. See, that's, patience. That's cookies. Same whale. Been there the whole time. Is he even following us? When you think about uh, whales, gray whales specifically, they have very few predators. Uh, essentially man and, and killer whales or orcas. And they're naturally curious animals, but in spite of that curiosity, they're extremely shy. They're kind of almost strangely uh, shy animals. And what it seems to have taken in the case of the development of this friendly great whale behavior is a lot of time, a lot of time in association with the animals, in close association with the animals, and especially uh, a relationship that didn't push the animals, it didn't follow the animals. The, the earliest uh, days of lagoon great whale watching occurred in Scammon's Lagoon, and it was the practice there to follow the whales around, follow the whales around, follow the whales around. And what uh, the whale watching boats, the commercial boats, and, and the skiff drivers learned from that experience was that following the whales only produced following a whale uh, going further and further and faster and faster away from the boat. So by the time whale watching switched to uh, San Ignacio Lagoon, the more and more of the skiff drivers were just accustomed to going out in the vicinity of the whales and idling around, letting the motor run and just sitting there on top of the motor or going in slow circles. Uh, and it's almost a feeling of, of, of like uh, baiting, baiting the animals or what. The, the idea is to not follow them and even deliberately to not follow them. And after a while, and the, the whales apparently had some feeling that by being around these boats, they weren't going to be followed or what, uh, they, they, their curiosity, their natural curiosity uh, became more and more dominant and overcame this uh, natural shyness that they seem to have. And when you think about man's relationship with animals in general, uh, to have an encounter like this where the animals are coming to you, they're actually seeking you out, coming over to you. It's very much like a Garden of Eden situation, how I imagine the earth was at one time. The gray whales migrate all the way from the seas of Alaska down along the Pacific coast to Baja, California, and back again, roughly 12,000 miles. It's about a four-month long journey each way. The fact that these whales swim so close to the coast by the most populated areas of California is what attracts many people to whale watch. Whether you're in San Francisco, Los Angeles, or San Diego, the chance to see one of the largest animals on Earth in its natural environment is truly an exciting event. Every winter, whale watchers take charter boats to the lagoons in Baja to get a close look at these remarkable animals. Along the way are the remote islands of San Martin, San Benitos, and Cedros, Due to their isolation, they are still relatively pristine habitats. These islands are home to a number of indigenous species of wildlife, including sea lions, pelicans, and elephant seals. The story of the elephant seals is similar to that of the gray whale. During the commercial whaling period at the beginning of this century, the elephant seals were sought for their blubber and almost slaughtered to extinction. Since then, they've made quite a comeback. At just a month old, these pups will be weaned and have to fend for themselves. The bulls, named for their bulbous trunks, compete for dominance over large harems of females.
These lumbering animals can nevertheless move with lightning speed to claim a female or defend their territory. After arriving in the lagoon, the boat drops anchor. It will stay for three days while whale watching groups take small skiffs to attract curious or friendly gray whales. And about 14 years ago, one mother whale brought a baby over, and everyone reached over and they got to touch it. And the captain of the small boat said, let's get out of here, the mother's here somewhere, and she, she's going to probably tip us over because we're touching her baby, and so they, they moved away as fast as they could. The baby followed, and next thing you know, it popped up next to the boat, and again they touched it. And then the mother came over and they touched her, and the word got around very quick that there was a friendly mother whale showing off her little calf. And everyone that year got the pet, the mother, and the baby. The next year, there were two mothers that brought their calves over to be petted and touched. The third year, there were four cow-calf mother cow -calf pairs that came over to have the small boat touch them and pet them. And today, about 10% of the whales going to the San Ignacio Lagoon are friendly whales, meaning that they seek you out and they look for you and they come over and you get to touch them, you get to pet them, you get to put your hands in their mouth, you get to scratch them, you don't touch a blowhole, but you do touch them. Because these lagoons are important breeding areas for the gray whales, the Mexican government has designated them a national park. In order to preserve these waters as sanctuaries for the mothers and calves, the government also regulates the numbers of boats and visitors which come here every winter. The majority of these gray whales come to these lagoons every winter to mate or to give birth. In January of 75, we observed a whale resting at the surface, breathing rather rapidly, and we thought she was sleeping. At that time, um, we decided to put a hydrophone overboard to record some sounds, and much to our amazement, the whale rolled over in a 360-degree turn, and as she came belly up, we saw the baby's head protruding from the mother's vagina about this far. The mother continued the roll, and then disappeared underwater. A few moments later, a baby's head appeared out of the water, sticking its whole head up and looking kind of like a little pickle with big dimples where the hair follicles were. The mother at the, uh, was nowhere to be seen at this time. Apparently, she swam off and we think delivered the afterbirth uh, several hundred yards away. Meanwhile, the baby approached our 12-foot aluminum skiff um, very closely and uh, we were rather excited. We'd never been so close to a young whale before, and I kept starting the outboard motor and backing off, worried that the mother, when she returned, might uh, attack us, trying to protect the baby. And when the mother came back, she swam underneath the baby and then surfaced and supported the baby across her back, her flippers, or else on um, her, her tail stalk. The baby uh, seemed to lack a lot of musculature and coordinated swimming motions, and in fact its flukes were curled around in sort of a fetal position. Um, after about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes, the baby was starting to swim rather strongly and, and swimming against the tide. Um, we were so engrossed in the whole affair that we were almost swept out with the strong currents through the mouth of the lagoon, the Boca de Soledad, and into the breakers. Uh, at this time, we had to break off our observations. Here comes Mama. The baby whales stay close to their mothers about a year. There's the calf. Look at that. 
You can still see the dimples. Now this calf isn't that old because its nose is partially wrinkled and the dimples are very pronounced there. During that time, they'll learn the basics, feeding, diving, and swimming. All skills they'll need for their northward migration back to Alaska. Mating can involve more than two whales. Adult females will mate as frequently as once a year. This activity can usually be recognized by a great deal of thrashing about, rolling and fluking for a prolonged period of time. We received a letter from a teacher that was going to take her children whale watching. Well, as luck would have it, the boat went out of the entrance to the breakwater. They turned the point and started heading up toward Point Furman, and there were three whales. In all animals, it takes two to mate. In whales, they take three, two males and one female. And what it does, one male helps the other male. Uh, and what they do is they, they hold them together and then they, they act as the backstop and they cooperate with each other. Well, here were three whales. They were not moving, they were standing still, and the boat came right up next to them. And just when they did that, the whale rolled over and lo and behold, the teacher put her hand over her eyes and one little girl said, Teach, what is that? What is that? Um, she said, that is a special periscope of the whale. Well, it was really a mating sequence. In the summer feeding grounds of Alaska, adult gray whales eat small crustaceans called amphipods, which dwell in the muddy ocean bottom. As you can see, the whale turns sideways, opening its mouth to vacuum its food from the bottom. The whale strains out mud and water between the baleen plates. These plates act as a sieve to filter the small crustaceans, of which they will eat up to a ton a day. These whales usually have three or four throat grooves or pleats, which enable their throats to expand. This allows the whale to take in larger amounts of water to filter for food. We were watching three whales on their way north in March, about four years ago, off of Half Moon Bay. And we often say that gray whales are opportunistic eaters on their migration, but they primarily do their feeding during the summer months up north. And right before our eyes, these three whales stopped their steady swimming north and began to go into various feeding strategies back and forth for four hours. When we looked at the photometer, it was um, 31 fathoms and it was just a vertical, thick, line of food, plankton, anchovies, and then mackerel. And these three whales were just surface skimming, they were lateral lunging. Um, it was just right there, after seven years of watching gray whales, I was actually seeing some feeding on the northward migration. The gray whale's nose, or blowhole, actually contains two nasal passages. When they blow, they exhale air at over 100 miles per hour, atomizing seawater trapped above the blowhole. This produces the visible blow. These whales usually take in a breath on average once a minute and then dive for three to five minutes. When the whale dives, it leaves a swirling circle or slick at the surface, known as its footprint or fluke print. Right on the, surface. the tail, or fluke, acts as a propeller which moves it through the water as fast as 15 knots. The whale usually travels at about four to five knots. These animals are so big uh, 
uh, humans, ourselves, uh, whether they be children or, uh, or adults, have really no conception of what big is until you get close to one of these animals. A mature animal would be about one ton or 2,000 pounds per foot. And uh, when one comes in close and you hear it uh, spout, it sounds like, like a tremendous amount of air rushing into a metallic tank. There's no other sound like it. And that's when you begin to feel big. I mean, this animal is, is as big, is as long as the boat that you're in, a large boat. Uh, it weighs almost as much as the boat. And it can move through the water with hardly making a ripple. Love it, love it. Gray whales are easy to identify by the fact that many parasites attach themselves to their thick skin. These whales pick up a species of barnacles, which live only on gray whales. Other parasites include these orange-yellow cyamids, or whale lice. Many of these parasites drop off once the whales reach the cold waters of the North Pacific, leaving scars on the whale's skin. Oh, look at that head out of the water. Look at that. These gray whales will often lift their bodies out of the water at eye level to see what is going on around them. This behavior is known as spy hopping. Oh, yeah. Good spy hopping. There's a spy hopper. Just give us a little push. She's just giving us a little ride. Right. Nothing to worry about. She just doesn't know. Rolling up. Here's her nose. Her nose is over here again. Just, okay, we're getting a little whale rod right power here. Hang on. She's Whoa. blowing bubbles again. Oh, what a nice one. Well, you didn't need it. Nice to be seen, Bell. Great. Okay, she's just back here. Yeah, I got her new girl. Once in a while, they'll come up and bump us. We were out watching a cow-calf pair and a little, um, some fishermen in a very small zodiac boat were zooming around, revving their engines up and down around the calf, calf, cow-calf pair. And our skipper uh, notified them over the PA system that they were in violation of the Marine Mammal Act and that they should back off because they were actually harassing this, the animals. And this had gone on for about an hour. The female came over to our boat and literally the calf was left at the back of our boat in the water. She left the calf there and then went over to the small boat and came up uh, in a what's called a peduncle stand where her tail flukes way high out of the water and came, slapped her tail down, just missing the small boat by a few feet. The calf all this time was in the back of, at the uh, stern of our boat, rolling around, looking up at us breaching a couple of times. And we felt that this was just a perfect example of how, if you've been practicing good whale watching boat behavior, the animals are very comfortable with you over time and that they are so comfortable that they would, as she was, that she was willing to leave her calf there and go off and take care of this other boat that was really harassing her. We strongly recommend that you choose recognized and professional whale watching tour boats to observe these whales at close range. Friendly whales will often do playful right things around whale watchers and their skiffs. Oh, let's see, look on the other side. Bumping us, he's bumping us. There you go, that's it. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, love it. Look at the peck here. You gotta like it. Oh, look at this whale. I love it. Looks like they got some friendlies over there too. Just a wave.
my most humdinger experience is uh, actually romantic experiences with uh, great whales, especially down in San Ignacio Lagoon. This was a year ago, uh, last March, we were down uh, with a uh, group from the Cabrillo Marine Museum and uh, was out on a small boat, 14-foot skiff, and we were looking at the uh, friendly whales, so-called friendly whales, and I had literally had one fall in love with me, a female and her calf. And uh, she was uh, such a lovely creature, I named her after my mother-in-law, whom I love dearly, Gladys. She chased us around the lagoon for an hour and a half, two hours. Every time we tried to, uh, to uh, get to, to the big boat, which was the Cape Polaris, she would come between us and the uh, big boat, and then we had to stop. She would come up, stick her head in the skiff, along with her calf and uh, just wanted to be stroked and petted and one of my areas of work has been with with uh, whale lice so I had an opportunity to observe uh, live lice on the head of a live whale and I would stroke her and at one point I just became enamored enough to grab her around the rostrum and I just gave her a big kiss and she she just stayed there there he is, right here. His head's coming up on the air. Look at that. Oh, look at how big that is. Look at the eye. There's a side. And you should be able to see the eye. It's right at the corner yeah, now. Yeah. Oh, rolling upside down here. Just about. Not quite all the way. Here we go. Right here. This is all right, right here. Yeah. Oh, he's right. Okay, he's back over here. Yeah. these gray whales have been protected, their population has rebounded in recent years. Our continued concern for their welfare will ensure a healthy population and preserve experiences like these for our future generations.